Hi, welcome back. My name is Andrew Welton and I'll be guiding you through this session. Today we're going to talk about the chemistry of polymers, another aspect of polymer chemistry. The learning objectives for today are to understand and identify prefixes and suffixes used for naming chemical compounds, draw straight line condensed and zigzag structures for common organic compounds, and then apply your knowledge to describe why understanding structure is important for environmental and infrastructure applications. There are many different prefixes and suffixes that are used for organic compounds. And simply by looking at a name of a compound, you can figure out what the chemical structure is. For example, on the left-hand side of this slide, you can see a list of prefixes. And these prefixes correspond to the number of carbon atoms in that compound. So for example, methane. Methane, meth, has one carbon atom in that compound. <clears throat> Heptane has seven carbon atoms in that compound. Octane, which you may be familiar with, with gasoline, has eight carbon atoms in that compound. So by understanding the prefixes, you can understand the number of carbon atoms in a compound. Suffixes are also important. This tells you what types of bonds are present in that compound. So for example, methane only has single bonds, doesn't have any double bonds. If it had double bonds, it would be called methene. For pentene, pent means that there's five carbon atoms in that compound, and ene means that there are double bonds in that compound. So it's important to recognize these <coughs> compounds so that you're able to then apply that knowledge to polymer chemistry. Now there are three different ways to describe and draw chemical compounds. The first is the straight line format. And here you can see carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, and the bonds between these um, atoms. There's also an oxygen atom in that compound. What we're looking at here is propanol. So prop is the prefix. It has three carbon atoms. All is the functional group. It's a alcohol. So you have the OH functional group there. Now we can draw this a different way where we don't show the, the bonds themselves and we just put all the, the, the atoms or letters together. We have a condensed format and then we can also draw it in the bond line. Format. And here what we have is we only show the functional groups and all the carbon and hydrogens are basically assumed to be present because of the bonds that are present there. These are single bonds. Other key information, there's a term we talk about compounds in terms of whether aliphatic compounds, cyclo compounds, or aromatic compounds. Aliphatic compounds are straight line compounds. So here what we see is the bond line structure for hexane. Hexane, hex, has six carbon atoms and it only has single bonds. Now we can take that hexane and wrap it up into a ring. It has the same number of atoms, the same bonds, except it's a ring structure now, and we can call it cyclohexane. Or we can take that compound and make a benzene ring. And compounds that are based on benzene or benzene ring compounds are aromatic compounds. And so this right here, benzene, is almost identical to cyclohexane, except there are double bonds present. Now, why are we talking about all this organic chemistry is because in the infrastructure and the environment, it's important to understand where chemicals are coming from in terms of the plastics that are being used, that are falling apart, or they're being manufactured right actually in the environment. Here is an example of styrene. Styrene is a common monomer that's used to manufacture plastics. And styrene actually can degrade into benzene, ethylbenzene, acetophenone, and many other compounds. This is important because First of all, you can see there's some similarities there. For all those products, there are benzene rings. They, they have a different functional groups or uh, atoms that are bonded to it. So that's what makes them different. But they can all be generated due to degradation processes or other processes uh, starting with styrene. Also important 
are oxidation and reduction processes associated with, with organic compounds that are used either to make plastics or they're left over inside the plastics. They didn't fully react and they can leach out or they're produced as a byproduct of manufacturing left inside the plastic and then when they get into the environment, they, they leach out either off gassing into the air or into the water. So here styrene is again the, the parent compound and the degradation products can be um, many. There are a number of other organic compounds that can be found there just for styrene, for example. There's dimers, and this is where you basically have a mirror image uh, where you have the same um, parent group on each side of the mirror. So that's a dimer. Or you have a trimer where you have uh, the same parent group except in, you consider, three mirrors. And so all these different compounds can be generated just from the starting compound, right? So if you just start with styrene, and you do some type of manufacturing process or um, you have degradation process, you can actually form all these other compounds. And that's why environmental uh, analysis in, in finding pollutants can be very difficult because what you start with isn't necessarily what you would go uh, try to find in the environment. In conclusion, uh, what we want to do is talk about um, identifying prefixes and suffixes for common organic compounds. We want to be able to draw straight line condensed and zigzag structures, which you should be able to do now, and also apply knowledge to describe why understanding uh, chemical structure is important for environmental and infrastructure applications. Thanks so much for listening, and let's try to apply your knowledge.